Good morning, everyone. It's an exciting day today. Guess what, everyone? We're starting a new book in the Bible. Yes. Okay. I was excited about that with numbers too, right? <laughs> Let's get started first with our celestial condition. Established heaven on earth. Ah. Seems to be such, in a way, elusive, right? Concept, yes? Well, that's understandable. What have we got going on around the world? Wars. Full-blown wars. I have to tell you, growing up in Switzerland, and having been, oh, okay, educated and told and... Growing up so close to the Holocaust, right? World War II and all that, right? close to it. Now, my mom was born in 1940. Yeah, right in the midst of it in a way. Well, in any case, so you grow up and it seems like, yes, I know, there were other little wars going on this snap, but you... In a way, one thought, okay, well, the next big thing would be World War Three, but we're not going to do that, are we? I mean, that's not going to happen. With the fiasco we had in World War Two. yet, here we are again, right? <laughs> that's probably the most, in a way, significant war that's going on right now, with whom, and... It's like you just kind of watch from the outside and you're just shaking your head going, what's wrong with these leaders? Where's their head? Stuck up somewhere in a dark hole. Right? Yes, smelly, stinky, poopy. Yeah, I'm just saying. But here we are. <laughs> At my age, I'm looking at, I can't believe this is actually happening. Right? Yeah. Then we have legalizing, yeah, working on, in this country, legalizing to have sex with children. Legalizing it. Whoa. One would think, right, with... Uh, all the kind of movements that we have going on out there that are trying to protect the women, trying to protect children. How's this even, how could this even, how can this, how is this even being mentioned? Where are we at with all that? Is, does it really give a man such great satisfaction to have? Sex with a child. Not talking the pedophiles that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did I read in numbers about the Israelites? Young girls. How old were these little girls? Keep them to yourself for yourself. Yeah. How long ago has that started? the general public, right? common man out there, that wants what? Well, otherwise this would right, be stomped into the ground. <laughs> as soon as someone had opened their mouth, well, we're going to, yeah, hell no, uh-uh, that ain't happening. Get rid of these guys who are trying to do that. Now! Are we not in the majority? Huh? Yes? Does that matter what race you are? You shouldn't be for stuff like that. Okay, just saying. So, here I am, you know, my age, look, got there, I'm going Established heaven on earth. Hey, okay. Hey. Well, one has to start somewhere. The beginning has to be somewhere, right? Yes? Yeah. And as I said, I see other things happen. Lots and lots of good things. Right? People... 
establishing a relationship with God. Lots and lots of people. That's all, in a way, in the beginning stages as well. Yes? Yeah? In a new way, in a way. <laughs> so that will take time too, right? All right. I was a blessed child. Peace in mankind. Care and love for every dependent child. Peace. Every child feels secure, which reflects cause and effect in the child's life. Peace. Every child eats. Peace. Every child is warmed in cold times. Peace. Understanding a child's growth in troubling times. Then to guide the child to attain harmony with peace. I am peace as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter of God, peace, to become the best I can be for every child, repentance, knowing every child is deserving of peace, prayer, knowing every child comes first, restored, conditions are fulfilled when every child is loved and cared for, death separates us from our earthly path to attain peace, our taught descendants are the future, the change of lineage, God's lineage in action. The true cause and effect in a child's harmonious and happy life. I am an adult ashamed to ask for anything from my heavenly parents for myself. If a child on earth needs my prayers and conditions greater than I, peace will happen when peace can be found in every child. I will be less than any child that suffers due to mankind's unkindness. Spirit world will hold us all accountable. Regardless, remember that. I saw another good one. A good one. Yeah, people fighting over. <laughs> who do you believe in? You know, who is da da da? And who betrayed whom? And blah blah da da da. <laughs> Religious squabbles. <laughs> and uh, it came up on, okay, someone said, whatever. That, yeah, as a family, you have to, even in spirit world, then wait. Right? If, if, if either you or your family members just not do something, that then, okay, then everybody is responsible for it to get. No, that's here on earth. Okay? All right? To begin with, it was when you go to spirit world, you go by yourself. Yes, you are. You do. And depending on how your life on earth went, uh, yes, where your spiritual growth lies, yes, okay, that determines where you're going, you, not your family, uh, people you love, took care of, this that, or took care of you, hurt, this that, I don't know what else, right? You, you will be there, and you will be where you belong. And it's kind of a nice, neat package, right? And the other way around explained, you know, where, oh, okay. Oh, it doesn't matter what I do here. My family huh, is going to have to wait to also huh, huh, step into heaven because they're going to have to help me fix myself. Nice, nice one, yes. That selfish attitude again, right? Yeah, it blows me away when I see stuff like that. Well, anyway, so, so my question then straight off is, oh, so while people here on earth abuse, punish children, a punish, a child that has to go through the desires of, of adults that are absolutely out of bounds, okay? absolutely forbidden then uh, can rejoice people like that then can rejoice that that child will still suffer in spirit world yes 
Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah, you, some people would really like to have it that way, don't they? Well, it's not like that. It is absolutely not like that. You will go to spirit world on your own, by yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Even birth can be a bit different. You can be a twin, a triplet. Ah, yeah. That can't happen. Yes. But the spirit world, you're not going with your twin, most likely. You will be going alone. You are going alone, all by yourself. And not uh, others are going to have to uh, suffer with you over whatever you did that then keeps you separated from uh, everything and all that you've known. It'll be just you. Just you. You will suffer on your own. Yes, there will be help. Most likely not from your family members. Maybe. It just depends on where they are. But to think in the selfish way that huh, when you go to spirit world, you know, huh, yeah, you're going along, but huh, all your family, this and that, will have to wait, wait for you. You have to be all together as a family before you can go to heaven, per se, paradise, and have your own castle in the sky there, or whatever. That's not right. Because then what would, what would in spirit world exist as well as it does here on earth? Huh? The continued suffering of children. The continued abuse. Nothing to do with them. But it has everything to do with you. So, don't be too happy when you think that could be true or that's true. Because someone high up there said it. Beware. <laughs> anyway, had to say that. Oh, my gosh. I'm not sure people can actually get more selfish out there. I guess there is a possibility. I always try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt, okay? Yes, of course. If I remember it, I'll tell you afterwards. Okay, all right, all right. So we are here. Did I finish that properly up? Yes, yes, I did. New book, you guys, the book of Deuteronomy. Mm. Okay. Oh, dearest Father, dearest Heavenly Parents, let this be a good one. Ugh, oh, I'm already getting a different message here. All right, all right, I'm not going the, down the negative route. Let's try and find the best in this book. So we're going to read, I'm going to read the introduction to it. The book of Deuteronomy is, as its name implies, a second version or copy of the law. Really? It may well be the book of the law discovered in the temple. Oh, okay. Listen, listen. It's not, this is the book of the law discovered in the temple at the time of the reform of King Josiah. Okay? It's, it may well be the book. May, they don't know. No idea. So why is it in here like that? Why do you even put it in there? No need to do that. We don't know. It's all hearsay. Supposedly. Right? We don't know. One should not put it because most people don't realize. It may well be. It could. But we don't know for sure. Well, if you're not sure, why even bring it up? It may be the book of the law discovered in the temple at the time of the reform of King Josiah. 622 before Christ. Although it clearly incorporates a great deal of earlier material, it contains many religious emphasis char characteristics of the prophets and must have received its definite molding at that time. So they don't know that either for sure. 
after an introductory summary on Israel's history and the need for fidelity. <laughs> really? I, to me, it seems like there's no need for fidelity. Young girls killing babies, having all that blood on their hand. And then the young girls, what do you do with them? <laughs> I don't know. Raised him into wonderful young women and then married him off properly? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, Daniela. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what it... it that's what was written there. I'm just telling you what there is. Seems to be pretty clear what happened to those young girls of the Midianites. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Here we go with the fidelity thing again. It is structured on three great discourses of Moses the second of which sandwiches <laughs> the Deuteronomy Code of Law, blah, 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 it is dominated by the twin ideas of love and law. Oh. Oh, the great, dis oh, the three great discourses of Moses, that's part of the law, and then the, the it, but it is dominated by the twin ideas of, of love and law, God's passionate and inclusive love for Israel, his chosen nation, and his affectionate intimacy with Israel, and Israel's response in wholehearted love and filial obedience to the law. Oh, really? Well, we already know that's not true. Okay, let's get hoodwinked for a little longer here. Oh, Danielle, you're already starting out good in this one. I'm just saying, I mean, come on now. I just read all this over here. I know how cantankerous, bloodthirsty, uh, uh, and trying to get around God's word or the, uh, uh, the, the instructions and the laws and all on how they've already done all that. Now you're telling me they're filial and obedient to God's law? Okay. They're sure quick to kill people, that's for sure. Or what? Picking up sticks? Oh, yeah, I'm never going to get over this one. Okay. The, this response is expressed in a tribute of... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I got it. Oh, 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 Guys. This response is expressed in a tribute of tithes, firstborn and first fruits, a recognition that Yahweh is master of the land and its produce. Yes, got it. Yep, mm-hmm. But the Israelites must also imitate God's generosity to themselves through a code of law which excludes exploitation or humiliate humiliation of one Israelite by another. Oh. Okay. Well, let's see what it has to say. I could, you know what? I could just take this and say, I think we're done with Deuteronomy. <laughs> okay. We're doing a condition here. I got it. Daniela. Hey, people may have other things to say about it. Go ahead. I may see the cell wrong. Deuteronomy 1. Introductory Discourses. A. The First Discourse of Moses. Time and Place. These are the words which Moses addressed to all Israel beyond the Jordan. Why do I feel that the letters are smaller? They're not. Ugh. Oh, oh, <laughs> they are. The, the, the top introduction part, actually, the, the lettering is a bit bigger than down here. That's what I'm noticing. <laughs> that was so easy to read up there. Okay. Uh, addressed to all Israel beyond the Jordan in the desert in the Arabah facing Sup between Paran and Topel, Laban, Hazarat, and Tisahab. It is 11 days' journey from Horeb by way of Mount Seir to Kadesh Barnea. It was in the 40th year, on the first day of the 11th month, that Moses told the Israelites everything that Yahweh had ordered him to tell them. Mm -hmm. So we're just starting in the front again here. Oh, these are... Oh, guys, these are long chapters. Oh, yeah, they are. Well, not all of them, but this one is, sure. Okay, let's make it a couple hours today. Yeah. 
He had defeated Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived at Heshbon, and Og, king of Bashan. Also, uh, I just found that out, but supposedly Og was one of them giants, right? The giants, Og, king of Bashan. So the people of Bashan supposedly were like giants. Yeah, yeah, well, maybe we'll get into that one later, you know, what really a giant was at that time, right? Yes? Okay. Well, you know, you find, we find all them dinosaur bones and stuff. I could be a lie, too. I mean, maybe they're not. <laughs> what do I know? Right? But they're finding all them dinosaur bones that lived how many millions of years ago, right? Yet they can't find one proper uh, giant skeleton. I don't know, they, they didn't get buried or something? That must have been enough. That was just a few thousand years ago. Oh, yeah, they had that one where they said they found a skull, right? Well, it was huge. I'm going, I looked at that and I went and checked it out, this, that, you know. It wasn't really in public. You couldn't go and see it, this, that. Why not? That would be a moneymaker, wouldn't it? Yeah, because it's most likely a lie, right? Yes, you can't tell me that wouldn't be out there on display. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Yeah? I mean, we all know human nature by now, right? What's going on out there? It's all about making money. You can't tell me that the people who found that skull wouldn't... We're, we're just, man, we are rich. We got this. This is the real thing. Da, 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 da. We can prove, right? No, they can't. It's hidden away somewhere. Nobody knows. Also, it was interesting to see um, the picture where the skull, the cart that it was on, this, that, you know. And I'm going, yeah, right. <laughs> I know <laughs> how advanced we are when it comes to certain vehicles and things like that. And yeah, no. <laughs> That's just, I'm looking at this. The whole picture just looked fake. Well, anyway. <laughs> but people want to believe it out there. Go oh, ahead. Hey, Giants were something. That's something considered different at the time. Well, anyway. Yep. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, maybe a couple thousand, three thousand years from now. You know, what's that tribe in uh, the people in uh, Africa? They're called the... Ah, I forgot. Ah, they're really tall, and they can t jump really tall, too. And they're great runners as well, right? The Maasai, something like that, right? The Maasai people. Really tall people, much taller than the average person, right? Yes? Oh, I don't know. Are they, will they be eventually considered, you know, the tallest race ever, right? I don't know. Now, do they look abnormally tall? No, they don't. They're just quite a bit taller than most others, right? Yes? Well, then we have the other, right? How about the pygmies? Very small people, right? A tribe of real... Oh, also in Africa. Right? Oh. Uh, can we stay with the fact? Can we just stay with the facts? In order for something to, I don't know, have some kind of an influence in people's lives, it has to be overly pulled out of proportion. Otherwise, it ain't worth mentioning. I don't know. But anyway, to get back, Og, king of Bashan, supposedly those were giants, who lived at Ashtaroth, Rot, and Edre. There in Moab, beyond the Jordan, Moses resolved to expound his, this law. He said, <laughs> The final instructions at Horeb. Yahweh our God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Move on, continue your journey, go to the highlands of the Amorites. To all those who live in the Arabah, in the highlands, in the lowlands, in the Negev, and in the coastland, going to Canaan and to Lebanon as far as the great river Euphrates. Now, 
didn't they have a thing where the cloud lifts and the cloud descends? That's when they know when to go on. So here, though, is Moses who had to go and tell everybody. You stayed here long enough. Oh, interesting. Oh, was that all? Was that just a fairy tale, too? Okay. Look, that is the country I have given you. Go and take possession of the country that Yahweh promised on oath to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to their descendants after them. At the same time, I told you I cannot be responsible for you by myself. Yahweh your God has increased your numbers until you are now as numerous as the stars of heaven. And Yahweh your God is going to increase you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised you. So how can I cope by myself with the bitter burden that you are? Oh, and with your bickering. Oh, well, there you go. See, I'm not wrong with that. From each of your tribes, pick wise, shrewd, oh, wise, shrewd, and experienced men for me to make your leaders. You replied, your plan is good. So I took your tribal leaders, wise, experienced men, and shrewd, don't forget, and appointed them to lead you as captains of thousands, hundreds, fifties, tens, and as scribes from your tribes. We, yep, we read about that in, I believe, Exodus. At that same time, I told your judges, which mm -hmm, you must give your brothers a fair hearing and see justice done between one person and his brother or the foreigner living with him. We know they didn't do that with the stick, with the one who picked up sticks. Oh, it might have been before. Okay, Daniela. Yeah, no, you must be in Pasi. This is when you read the whole Bible and go, aha, uh -huh, mm -hmm. what does this sound like now? Oh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. That's why it's important. Read the whole Bible. Do not be afraid of any human person. For the verdict is God's. Should a case be too difficult, bring it for me to hear. And on that occasion, I gave you instructions about everything you were to do. Okay. All right. Kadesh, the Israelites... <laughs> it's coming again Kadesh the Israelites lose faith what else is new so as Yahweh our God had ordered we left Horeb and made our way through that vast and terrible desert which you saw on the way they had to mention it was a terrible desert yeah you gotta you gotta know why they're complaining again it's a terrible desert I mean listen they went through hardship yet well, anyway, which you saw on the way to the Amorite Highlands and arrived at Kadesh Barnea. I then said, you have now reached the Amorite Highlands, which Yahweh our God has given us. It must be Moses saying all this. Huh? Look, Yahweh your God has given you this country. March in, take possession of it as Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, has said. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Then you all came to me and said, Let us send men ahead of us to explore the country. They shall report to us which way we ought to take and what towns we shall come to. This seemed good advice to me, and I selected twelve men from among you, one from each tribe. These men made towards the highlands and went up into them. They reached the valley of Eshkol and reconnoitered it. They collected some of the produce of the country and brought it down to us. Is that a repetition of what they've already done earlier when uh, Caleb and Joshua went? With uh, ten others? Or is this a new one? I guess it's the same. That sounds like it's the same. Uh, 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 uh. Uh -uh. They collected some of the produce of the country and brought it down to us, and they made us this report. Yahweh our God has given us a fine country. You, however, refused to go up there and rebelled against the voice of Yahweh your God. You muttered in your tents, saying, Yahweh hates us, and that is why he has brought us out of Egypt. Okay, so then how did they figure out 
the twin ideas of love and law, God's passionate and inclusive love for Israel. Well, somebody figured that out. These guys think he hates them. Odd one. Okay. Man, they are just so confused, these people. I mean, I get it. That, this was like in the beginning time. I guess it's kind of ex uh, confusing when for the first time somebody doesn't grow up with any kind of religion or God or this and then it suddenly comes across something or they're going, oh my gosh, I do want to know more about this. I do. I f always felt something was missing in my life, blah, 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 this or that. Right? And then, right, suddenly there is this, oh, I have to adhere to this. I have to adhere to that. What else is there, right? They have to completely start anew in a way, right? With their spiritual makeup, they have to wash everything else off and start anew, right? Yes, maybe a little bit like that for the Israelites in a way, but wait a minute, they had forefathers, right? Why did they want to leave Egypt otherwise? They wanted to be their own people with their own worship to whom? And not be restricted. Yet here, right, so no, so that doesn't quite fit either. Besides, they've been already hundreds and hundreds of years under these new laws of God, this and that, and how to rehabilitate them, restore them to that first Ezra. Right? Under the guidance of whom? God. So that's already gone through generations and generations. Right? How come they're still not there? When it comes to, to just trust God and his guidance. Hmm? What is it? And maybe this was still at an earlier time here. So we're, we're not really progressing with the books. We're just retelling the stories. Okay, let's do that then. You mothered in your tent, saying, Yahweh hates us, and that is why he has brought us out of Egypt to put us into the Amorites' power and so destroy us. What kind of place are we making for? Our brothers have discouraged us by saying that the people are stronger and taller than we are. <coughs> See, stronger and taller. They didn't call them giants. <laughs> the city's immense with walls reaching to the sky, and we have seen Anakim there too. And I said to you, do not take fright, do not be afraid of them. Yahweh your God goes ahead of you and will be fighting on your side, just as you saw him act in Egypt. You have seen him in the desert too. Yahweh your God continued to support you as a man supports his son. All along the road you followed until you arrived here. But for all this, you put no faith in Yahweh your God. Go ahead of you on the journey to find you a camping ground by night in a fire to light your path and in the cloud by day. Well, here we go again. Uh-huh. So they mentioned that just in the byways. <laughs> well, here's my question on all this again. So how finicky are people when it comes to all that? Right? So Moses in a way, he's, he's reminding them, said, here they are, said, he hates us. He got us out of Egypt just so that, you know, blah, 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 and we're suffering. We're not happy. We're not this and that, right? Yes? And now we're facing what? Well, if all the plagues are true, if that really all happened, ten of them, ten, I think, before they could leave, finally, right? That, did that make no impact at all on the Israelites? None. Zero. Well, that was weird. That was weird, too. That's weird. That one's even weirder. And, oh, what now? The last one? Okay. It seems to me like none of that actually happened. That had to leave some kind of an impact in the Israelites before they left and how they got away. Then the parting of the sea. Hello? That's, whoa. I mean, what? So 
The Israelite parents, they're not telling their children all these stories on how they got away, what happened all, and how amazing and great God is. Then, look, look at that, look what we built up according to God's instructions, right? The tent of meeting, the tabernacle. And, and, and look, you see what's happening above it? And what's happening at night? Well, is it all true? Can you imagine if we were to experience stuff like this now? In the physical like that? Huh? We'd be all about God, wouldn't we? We have to... We have to we have to trust and have faith in God with smaller things that happen. More subtle, more the, the more subtle support that we have from heaven. Yes. When it comes down to it all. And here, they had these just incredible things happening. And what what's going on with them? So, how much of it is true? All that wondrous stuff that happened. All these miracles. All that stuff. Here they are, just the complaining people. Can't see a way out. Here's the other thing, too. Not only are the Israelites so afraid of whoever, whatever people are ahead of them, okay, but the people ahead of them are afraid of the Israelites. You think that's a great thing? Well, oh, I like it when people are scared of me. <laughs> Is that a good thing? Either way. Well, the people ahead of them, like the Amorites, for example, right, they, what was their God? Who were their gods? This snap. Well, we know about Balaam. Well, that sounded like Yahweh too, didn't it? What how, what kind of reputation followed ahead of the Israelites about them? That's interesting to me. When Jesus came to uh, uh, Jerusalem, uh, was it was it that uh, wherever he ended up at Passover, just uh, with his donkey, the people just welcomed him. The, the what, what went ahead of Jesus was here comes a great teacher, a loving teacher. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. In many of us, oh, here comes the miracle worker. Yay. Right? Yes? Why were the Israelites so feared? Why did they have to? Why, why wasn't there some way that when they got to where they went, or came to where there were people, that the people weren't waiting for them, embracing them, saying, we want to be a part of you. We want to be taught by your God. Because we heard about all these amazing things. Good things. But it wasn't like that, was it? Interesting. Just saying. So, what did Deuteronomy start out with? Okay. And where is that? That twin law? Where is it? Okay. I guess it was thrown in there somehow. Or again, somehow God's word eh, for us then to find it, to discover it. Eh? Yes. And amend eh, certain things as well. Certain things are, as I said, you got to make your way to that name. Eh? And then give thought to what you should give thought to. All right. Last part here. Yahweh's instructions at Kadesh. Mm -hmm. Yahweh heard what you were saying 
and in his anger swore this oath. Here we go again. You know, if you're angry yourself all the time and discontent and unhappy about life, right? Yes? then you are most likely going to follow something that then you can attach your anger and discontent and unhappiness to. The Israelites did that here. You really think that God would swear an oath under anger? Well, what God is this? Not the one I know. Regardless. You think he's happy about the war that's going on in the world right now? That one particular one. Huh? Oh, yeah, let me see. Who should win? Hmm, whose side should I be on? Eh, let me think. Huh? Yes. Or does he look at it and go, I can't be a part of this. I hope it works out for people however it's going to work out. I know a lot of innocent people will die. As far as having any kind of stake in any of it? I don't think he turns. He's not going to make an anger, uh, uh, no thing, anger there. Huh? Because of the absolute stupidity of people still having wars out there. Huh? Shooting at each other. Dropping bombs. This and that. Destroy, destroy others' properties. And that, and that. Okay? I think his heart's just full of sadness. Full of sadness. Regardless if you believe in God or not, have some other religion you'd rather be with. This, right? The number one thing should be you should respect life at all times. At all times. All right. But here we go. This is how they wrote it down. Yahweh heard what you were saying and in his anger swore this oath. Not one of these people, this, this perverse generation, will see the fine country I swore to give your ancestors. Except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, he will see it. To him and to his children, I shall give the land he has set foot on. For he has been perfectly obedient to Yahweh. Yahweh was angry with me too because of you. You will not go in either, he said. Your assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, will be the one to enter. Encourage him, since he is to bring Israel into possession of the country. And your little ones, too, who, you said, would be seized as booty, these children of yours who do not yet know good from evil. They will go in. I shall give it to them, and they will own it. But as regards yourselves, turn round, go back into the des desert, Towards the Sea of Sub. Uh -huh. All right. Well, so here we are again. As I said, backtrack. A flashback. Flashback. Okay. Deuteronomy. So many hundreds of years earlier again. Okay. Yeah. So. It's interesting, what did I say yesterday on how people are worried about their own children being a booty to somebody else, but they're making booty out of other people's children. Okay, gotcha. Hey, weird one. In reply, you then said to me, we have sinned against Yahweh our God. We shall go up and fight just as Yahweh our God has ordered us. And each one of you buckled on his arms and equipped himself to march up into the highlands. But Yahweh said to me, tell them this. Do not go up and fight. I am not with you. Do not let yourselves be defeated by your enemies. So I told you, but you would not listen and you rebelled against the voice of Yahweh. Presumptuously, you marched into the highlands. The Amorites who live in that country of hills came swarming out against you like bees pursued you and beat you from Seir to Hormah. On your return, you wept in Yahweh's presence, but he would not listen to your cries or pay attention. That was why you had to stay at Kadesh as long as you did. I'm done talking. I said, everything I just said beforehand, this and that, it's like, I said, this is like this flip-flop, flip-flop, this, that, I don't know what. 
Da, 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 da. This is what I'm going to conclude with. Um, Yahweh said this, Moses said that, maybe Yahweh said this and that too. Moses definitely said whatever, this and that. Too. Okay, whatever. Okay. No God. No God. If one has a flip-flop, right? I like wearing flip-flops on my feet every once in a while, but I'm not a flip-flopper. <laughs> I always move forward. That's what I do. Right? Sometimes I retract a little bit to do what? Share certain things. This, that, yes. Uh... I've learned and got encouragement and, uh, how do you say, not conviction, uh, had validated things right, from other people sharing. Oh, I know exactly how that feels. That's what happened to me. Yes? So then you know, this is not just a figment of your imagination. That's reality. Yes? You got, everybody got to remember that games. Right? Okay, I'm talking more now uh, cyberspace stuff, right? Yes, internet stuff. Games, movies, dramas. Right? Uh, the news <laughs> are fiction. Most of it is all fiction. It's not reality. If you're trying to apply something that has never existed, will never exist, okay, and uh, apply that uh, as reality, fiction, as non-fiction in your life of reality, right, yes, then you're most likely going to be, number one, disappointed because it doesn't work that way. Number, th num number two, yeah, you're going to crash. You will crash. Eventually, you 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 will have to admit, wow, and then what have you already all done? Under, uh, yes, cyberspace law, but in reality. And how did that work out? I saw the best new one. You can talk to an AI now. And uh, <laughs> I had it on, actually, on my Facebook feed. There was some going, you got to be kidding me. So I tried to click it out. You know, it wouldn't click out. It kept just on, you know, the little circle going, going. I said, oh, well, that's interesting. I said, that's never happened before, right? So I went and checked on another one, you know, some kind of a advertisement, clicked it out, and went just like this. Done, hidden. <laughs> this one didn't hide. <laughs> I'm going, oh, look at there. <laughs> I'm being overwritten oh, by an AI already. <laughs> <coughs> so what I did do, though, is go in and check and see on the comments on how people, huh, how happy they were with uh, this AI. And people, the majority, 75% at least, out of as many comments as I read and then did the numbers on it, were really happy and content. Oh, it was great to talk to this AI. It's so smart, and and uh, and I had the best conversation, and blah blah blah. And I'm going, wow. What did I just say beforehand? It's very difficult these days to have a conversation with someone face to face over just about anything. Right? In reality. Yet, you can go in with an AI and have a conversation that the AI completely does what? Yes? That's a false sense of security, people. And the thing is, once again, because of the conversations one has with something like that, right, that is non that is fiction. This is not a proper conversation between 
two human beings. I would say it would be even more proper to have a conversation with your dog or your horse would make more sense. Your cat, that pigs, <laughs> chickens. <laughs> then a cyberspace with a cyberspace identity okay, and AI to have a conversation with that like that. It has no, you're absolutely alone out there. There's nothing that connects that AI to you or you to it. Are you getting what I'm saying here? It's a false sense of security, a false sense of encouragement, a false sense that in reality will be absolute fiction. In reality, you will not find that. In reality, you have to build that communication system with another person, within your family, your community, your nation and the world. You get that? Yeah. Just say. Okay. Yes? But in the meantime, go ahead. Yeah. Do what you want. Uh, I have a... Uh, I always... Uh, uh, this will be my last one here. <clears throat> Uh, I always give everybody the benefit of the doubt. It's sometimes difficult now to know if you're actually talking to a person. Uh, are you talking to a robot? Are you talking to uh, uh, a scammer, a hacker, right? yes, who is initiating something and then, right, yes. Sadly, older women like me are a great target for them. Yes. Well. You guys can imagine yeah, what I do with that. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, 10, 12 years ago, I probably would have cussed them out. This, that. Okay. Cussed them out. Let them know. This. Now, I take a completely different approach. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Will I click on certain things? No. Right. But I, the, I, as I said, and I'll just see where, where things go. Do I give out any kind of extra personal information or this or that? No. Again, if you do not have the IQ, and that's what it is, to deal with people like that, okay, then, then you will become a victim. But if you know to keep yourself in check, give, and then, of course, make it a give and take, right? Yes? Okay, then you can teach. You never know how, for example, if it's a scammer or this or that, someone that wants money out of a little old lady like me, which we, <laughs> I think uh, I've asked, uh, there's a couple of them, and I said, you know, I really need some money. You know, can you pay my bills for me this month? Yeah, that was the end of the conversation. <laughs> 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 so anyway, you have sometimes, you know, it depends on, again, how much you own, how much you have, this and that, you know, how can you get taken, that's, then uh, you know, <laughs> that's that's up to you too, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, interesting on how they, within a short amount of time, have figured out what your life is all about, you know? yeah, people have talents like that too, yes, but again, you know, if your IQ is not where it should be when it comes to that, then please don't engage. Right? They're going to pull up your heartstrings, the snap, right? and you have to have the right questions to figure out, okay, how real are these people? Right? These guys, younger guys going after older ladies. <laughs> Why? Really? <laughs> again, that's another one again. You really think huh, that your life revolves on this level with someone? That's silly. 
I think by now everyone out there should know, or at least warn your older, your elders. Right? Uh, by the way, you know, if that comes up, let me have a look at it first. Right? Yes? Then you can deal with it right? or something. But anyway, how can people be hoodwinked like that so easily? How's that possible? I'm not getting it. Right? Yes? So trusting in the internet, so trusting in cyberspace and its honesty and truthfulness, so trusting in people you've never met, never seen, don't know who they are, what they're about. Huh? Yes, and then you get scammed or whatever. Huh? Your heart gets broken. So that's so easy for people to do. But you can't trust God. You can't trust God with your life. You trust some complete stranger out there with your life. But you won't trust. On Satan cyberspace, then hand them over your bank account. <laughs> but you don't trust God. All you have to do is hand over your heart. That's all you have to do. And you'll take it from there. It really does. Well, anyway, so there it is, right? Yes? Yeah. So what am I going to do today besides cyberspacing? <laughs> I have some more beds to fill with dirt. Um, I also need to finish some sewing. So I'm a little bit conflicted. I ca And I have a whole bunch of... My husband brought home... I think I mentioned that before, some leftover lumber and stuff, and they're really thin pieces, you know, that thin sheets of, I don't know what they're called, paneling. And uh, I went ahead and, and, and that most of the time, stuff like that goes to the dump, right? It gets thrown out, not here. I looked at that and gone, yes, yes, our projects with my grandchildren, right? Because I'm going to take care of them for the summer. So I cut some uh, to make a mosaic with them, okay? That's all just uh, uh, square tiles. Then I'm going to let them paint them. Then we're going to make a, a, a mosaic out of it, which I also have already the plate for it. Then one of them with uh, some of uh, the pieces, I was, I'm going to make a tic-tac, like a, a large tic-tac-toe, because they all love to play that, right? Yeah. How many times can you play tic-tac-toe and then it just becomes repetitious kind of thing? Right? I mean, I look at the whole thing. Oh, actually, my grandson was really good at it. I made one mistake one time. Oh, man, he took advantage of that just like that. But as I said, huh? but for children, huh? okay, yeah. Uh, Tic-tac-toe. I don't know. As I said, how many different variations? I mean, there's one that always works if the other one doesn't get it. But once the other one gets it, then you can't do that one. Then what? So it always ends in a what? A tie. Right? Yes? Always. You can only play that with new people and win. <laughs> Tic-tac-toe. Yeah. Tic-tac-toe. But I made one. <coughs> My uh, youngest granddaughter, she's not quite there yet, so. <laughs> Still have to teach her on how that works. Yes? Uh-huh. It's a good one to teach children strategy. Anyway, and remember them. So... And then I cut a whole bunch of them for just to make you know, paint, to paint on. So I've got all this stuff that I need to sand. Yes. Then I made cut some smaller pieces, long ones to make stars as well. So I have, I have all these pieces. Gosh, I've got to be a couple hundred pieces over there that I have to sand off now. Yes. Yes. So they don't splinter. And then I uh, found some uh, primer that needs to be used up. So I'm going to prime all the pieces. Yes. So I'm going to be ready to go. So that's going to be a, a, a big job. <coughs> Probably uh, more than one day. Yeah, I'll watch a good show. I'm thinking on re-watching one. I don't know yet. We'll see. 
Might just watch some uh, gardening videos, this and that, while I do that. Sounds good, too. Okay, we'll find out. We'll see. We'll see what I'm going to do. Something definitely that's just a background entertainment kind of thing, right? Yeah, where I don't have to think too much. <laughs> All right, sanding pieces isn't going <laughs> to... But it's going to be... Uh, I'll make it as interesting as I can for myself. And that's going to be a boring thing. But... While I do that, I often, my mind wanders anyway. So I got the TV going and I'm going to be doing that and my mind wanders anyway. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Might just sit out on the porch and just let nature kind of guide me. Well, we'll see. Maybe I'll do half and half. Huh? Yes? I don't know yet. I'll see how I feel about it. Either way, I always make sure that I feel about it. On the side of goodness. I'm going to do it according to. Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's about it. Oh, the horses are back. The dogs aren't back yet. Horses are back, so I'm going to want to take care of them. Yes. So we're in a new book Deuteronomy. I don't know, guys started out already in a way where I have to say okay <sighs> so many thousands of years later have we gotten any better than the Israelites or worse huh? as a collective even though even though what did I say to begin with? <sighs> Never give up. Never give in. <laughs> we will survive, right? Yes. Get better and better and better. We've got to believe that, too. We have to. Right? Because we have what? Descendants. Hmm? Children growing up, grandchildren growing up. Uh, I even seen one post of a friend, great grandchildren, seven already. Oh, I'm going, oh, I wonder. <laughs> I mean, I will be there. <laughs> That'd be wonderful, won't it? So we got to remember that. That's why, even though we hang in there, right? Yes. And let's just put a little more trust in our Father in Heaven. God, Heavenly Parent, Heavenly Parents, yes. Hmm. All right. That's all I have to say today. God's love and blessings always. May He protect you and I will. Talk to you another time.